Welcome to 3D Online Tuition. It is a three-dimensional e-learning method based on audio, visual, and event. Chapter 4. The Variety of Resources on Earth 4.1 The Various Resources on Earth 4.2 Elements, Compounds and Mixtures 4.3 Appreciating the Importance of Earth's Resources 4.1 The Various Resources on Earth The Earth is rich in resources needed to sustain life and used in everyday life. Earth's Resources Water Air Soil Minerals Fossil Fuels Living Things 1. Water the importance of water Our protoplasm in cells will shrink and die when water is absent. A person will die of dehydration. Helps dissolves and transports digested food and oxygen to all parts of the body. Helps in excretion by dissolving waste products in our body. Helps regulate the body temperature. Keeps the lungs moist which helps in respiration. Water supports and maintains the body shape of invertebrates. Helps dissolves and transport mineral salts from roots to leaves during photosynthesis. Transportation of synthesis food to various part of a plant. Transpiration in plants. Germination of seeds. Helps support aquatic plants. 2. Air. The importance of air our oxygen is needed for respiration and combustion of fuels. Carbon dioxide is needed for firefighting and in the manufacture of dry ice and carbonated drinks. Plants required carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. 3. Soil. The importance of soil as soil is a habitat for many plants and animals. Soil contains important resources such as water, air, humus and mineral salts. Plants absorb water from the soil. Air in the soil is needed for respiration of plant root cells and soil organisms. Humus is an organic substance from decaying living things which makes soil fertile and suitable for farming. Mineral salts dissolve in moist soil and are absorbed by the roots of the plants. Soil is needed for the formation of fossil fuels. 4. Minerals The importance of minerals are gold, platinum. Mercury and silver are found in their natural states are used to make everyday products and expensive ornaments. Mercury is used as a solvent for many metals and used to coat mirrors. Thermometers used contain mercury. Silver is used to prepare chemicals such as argentum nitrate, chemicals for photography. It is also used to make decorative items. Copper which is a good conductor of heat and electricity is used to make cooking utensils and electrical wires. Iron coated with tin is used to make food containers. Steel is used in the construction of buildings and bridges. 5. Fossil Fuels Fossil fuels are fuels formed from the remains of living things that died a long time ago below the surface of the earth. Natural gas, petroleum and coal are examples of fossil fuels. The importance of fossil fuels are fossil fuels are used in power stations to generate electrical energy and motor vehicles by burning of fossil fuels. Coke from coal used to blast furnaces to extract metals. Plastic, ammonia, sulfur and wax are some of the useful products processed from fossil fuels. 6. Living Things the importance of living things are plants and animals are living things important to us to produce food, clothes, building materials and fuels. We need clothes to protect our body. We need food to provide us with energy to carry out daily activities. We need building materials to build furniture and houses. We need fuels to cook food, generating electrical energy and operating vehicles. 4.2 Elements, Compounds and Mixtures The various resources on Earth exist as elements, compounds and mixtures. Elements 1. An element is the simplest form of matter. 
it cannot be broken down into two or more simpler substances by any chemical or physical methods. 2. An element is made up of one type of particle only. 3. An atom is the smallest particle in an element. 4. The most abundant element on Earth is oxygen while the most abundant elements in the universe are hydrogen and helium. 5. Elements may be solids, liquid or gases at room temperature. Metals and non-metals. 1. Elements can be classified into two main groups which are metals and non-metals. 2. All metallic elements, except mercury, are solids at room temperature. 3. Non-metallic elements can exist in solid, liquid or gaseous states at room temperature. Below is a table showing the differences between metals and non-metals. The appearance of the surface of metals are shiny while non-metals are dull. Metals are malleable while non-metals are not malleable. Metals are ductile while non-metals are not ductile. The density for metals are high while non-metals are low. The melting point of metals are high while non-metals are low. Metals are good conductor of heat while non-metals are poor conductor of heat. Metals are good conductor of electricity while non-metals except for carbon and silicon are poor conductor of electricity. Compounds 1. A compound is formed when two or more elements combine chemically through a chemical reaction. 2. The smallest particle in a compound is a molecule. 3. A molecule is a group of two or more atoms which are chemically combined. 4. Different compounds contain different numbers and types of atom. For example, ammonia is a compound which is formed when one nitrogen atom reacts chemically with three hydrogen atoms. 5. The ratio of different atoms in a compound is fixed. For example, A. Water consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. B. Methane consists of four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atoms. Mixtures. 1. A mixture is made up of two or more substances which are physically joined together. 2. Therefore, substances in a mixture can be physically separated. This is because substances in a mixture are not joined together through chemical reactions. 3. Mixtures may consist of elements, compounds, or a combination of both. The substances that make up a mixture may be solids, liquid, or gases. How do compounds and mixtures differ? Formation or preparation of compounds are through chemical reactions while mixtures are through physical methods. Heat is absorbed or released during the formation of compounds while no heat is absorbed or released during the formation of mixtures. New substances are formed when elements react together to form compounds their atoms join to other atoms using chemical bonds. No new substances are formed after substances are physically joined together to form mixtures. The properties of a compound formed are different from the original elements while the properties of components of a mixture remain the same. The ratio of components in a compound is fixed while the ratio of components in a mixture is not fixed. Compounds can be separated by chemical reactions while mixtures can be separated by physical methods. Differences between elements, compounds and mixture. 1. Constituents. An element is a pure substance that is made up of one type of particle. A compound is a substance made up of two or more different elements which are chemically combined. A mixture consists of elements, compounds or both which are combined physically. 2. Ability to be broken down into simpler substances. An element cannot be broken down into two or more simpler substances. A compound can be broken down into simpler substances by chemical means using heat and electricity. A mixture can be separated into its components by physical means. 3. Formation. An element can be obtained by breaking down a compound. A compound is formed when elements combine in a chemical reaction. A mixture is formed by mixing different components together physically. A. Energy involved in the formation. No energy is needed for the formation of an element. 
heat or light energy is usually released or absorbed during the formation of a compound. No energy in the form of light or heat is absorbed or released during the formation of a mixture. b. Ratio of constituents. Elements do not have a ratio of constituents. The components, elements, of a compound combine in a fixed proportion by mass. The components, substances, in a mixture can be mixed in any proportion by mass. 4. Properties of the constituents. Each element has its own distinct properties. The properties of a compound are different from their constituent elements. A mixture has the properties of its components. Separation of mixtures 1. Some components of a mixture can be separated by using one of the following physical methods. A. Sieving. This method is suitable for separating two insoluble solids of different sizes, for example, sand and pebbles or sand and paddy. B. Filtration. This method is used to separate a mixture of insoluble solids and liquids, for example, sand and water. This can be used to remove suspended particles from tap water. C. Evaporation. This method is used to recover a dissolved solid in a solution, for example, salt from brine and copper sulfate from its solution. D. Distillation. This method is used to recover a pure liquid from a solution, for example, distilled water from tap water, and petroleum fractions from crude oil. E. Using a separating funnel. This method can be used to separate two liquids of different densities. F. Using a magnet. A mixture of magnetic and non-magnetic substances can be separated by using magnets. The magnet attracts magnetic substances, for example, iron fillings, tiny nickel and steel screws. 4.3 Appreciating the importance of Earth's resources. Below is a table showing the importance of each resource. Water is used in the preparation of drinks and food, transportation and photosynthesis. Air is used in respiration, combustion and photosynthesis. Oil is used in agriculture, farming, mining and construction. Soil can be used as a habitat for living things. Minerals such as metals are used in the construction and manufacture of useful products. Fossil fuels are sources of energy. Human beings obtain food, clothes, fuels and building materials from plants and animals. 1. It is important to preserve and conserve resources. We have to be responsible in using natural resources and make sure that the balance and harmony in nature is not affected. 2. When animals are hunted in excess, they face extinction. Excessive consumption of fuel for transport and in the manufacture of goods results in greater demands for energy sources. 3. Extensive deforestation destroys the habitats of plants and animals. This can cause certain plant and animal species to become extinct. 4. To satisfy our needs, we have taken and used natural resources with no regard for the environment. As a result, we have made the environment unsuitable for living organisms. 5. There is pollution of the environment. Activities that pollute the air, water and soil are deforestation, logging, mining, industrial activities, illegal agricultural practices and increased use of vehicles and machinery. Importance of Preservation and Conservation of Resources on Earth 1. Preservation of resources is the act of maintaining Earth's resources in their natural environment so that the balance of nature is not disturbed. 2. Conservation of natural resources is the sustainable use and management of resources to prevent wastage, loss or damage. 3. Conservation and preservation of natural resources are necessary to prevent a. The destruction of the environment. b. The extinction of species. c. Natural disasters. d. Health problems. e. Loss of economic resources. f. 
shortage of clean water for drinking and washing. G. Damage to the balance and beauty of nature. 4. Preservation and conservation of resources on Earth requires the cooperation of individuals, communities and governments. 5. Measures to reduce pollution, and to preserve and conserve the Earth's resources are a. Reduce usage of Earth's natural resources. b. Reuse materials whenever possible. c. Recycle waste materials such as paper, glass, plastic and aluminium. d. Use public transport such as buses and the LRT. e. Take part in environmental projects such as planting trees, clearing, cleaning rivers and compounds. f. Use products made from biodegradable. g. Stop using products that contain harmful substances such as chlorofluorocarbons CFCs which destroy the ozone layer. h. Monitor factories that pollute the environment. i. Use less disposables. Happy learning.